Welcome, members of the media, NCAA, University of Minnesota representatives, school superintendents, mayors, members of the Minneapolis Local Organizing Committee Board of Directors, our Impact Advisory Council, educators, happy Teacher Appreciation Week, supporters of our young people, and especially our young people. Today is about basketball, books, reading, and kids. Thank you to Phelan Magnet School for hosting us today. We are in St. Paul, Minnesota's capital city, to announce a signature legacy program of the 2019 Final Four. Today, as the 2019 Final Four, Final Four Local Organizing Committee and the NCAA announce that we are teaming up to create lasting impact off the court. Together, we will promote and inspire reading for young people throughout Minnesota through a year-long statewide reading initiative called Read to the Final Four. It begins now. Yes, we are on the clock, and we are 329 days out from hosting one of the greatest events in all of sports, the Men's Final Four. But we're also counting down to another really big moment, the last day of school before summer vacation. A time for relaxing, a time for playing, but also a time to continue developing the mind and exploring new interests. And reading is the perfect way to do this. Actually, the summer months when too often academic skills may slip is an important time to double down on reading. Through the Read to the Final Four program, all Minnesota students, all Minnesota students who will be in third grade in the 2018-2019 school year can sign up, log on, and read thousands thousands of books in a high quality library that's available on any digital device, phone, tablet, computer. You can read online and you can read offline. And because it's summer vacation, you could read in a tree or you could read by the sea. I could read to you, or you could read to me. I know. How about we all read in a library? Listen, you could read fast, or you could read slow. But the more you read, the more you'll know. Thank you. This program is for all third graders across Minnesota all third graders across Minnesota. And to extend access to reading opportunities for kids, schools are invited to join now to make the program available all summer long to next year's third grade. Things will really heat up when we come back to school and officially tip off this program, beginning eight months of celebrating the importance of reading with special appearances, prizes, and final four excitement with the message for our kids, readers are winners. Schools that participate in this elective, free, and fun program will receive official read to the final four brackets and have the opportunity to advance just like the final four teams in a friendly competition based on how many minutes on average each school's kids spend reading. So readers are winners. As we see in the tournament, March Madness will bring upsets and Cinderella stories and you never know who and which school will read all the way to the final four. But we will bring those champions into downtown Minneapolis to have a special celebration and every third grade classroom has the opportunity to read to the final four. Now, I would like to introduce a very special person from the NCAA. Her name is Catrice Albert, and she is the Executive Vice President, Office of Inclusion and Human Resources. Catrice. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Kate, and good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be back in the Twin Cities, the site of the 2019 Men's Final Four. And today we celebrate reading, and we feel nothing but excitement and anticipation for the NCAA read to the Final Four. On behalf of NCAA President Mark Emmert and NCAA Basketball, we're excited to work with you as we launch the NCAA Read to the Final Four Literacy Program. I want to thank our host institution, my beloved University of Minnesota, for supporting the literacy program and for your work and dedication and hard work as we move towards next year's games. One of the first things that I learned just five months ago moving to the NCAA is that student success in the classroom, on their campuses, in their competitions, and in their communities is at the heart of the NCAA's mission. We place an, an enormous amount of attention on fairness and well-being and high academics. And with the mission of education, and you'll hear us talking a lot about that, we continue to be in an area where the NCAA and the host cities work to have positive impact on young students. The read to the Final Four Literacy Program began about four years ago and continues to be an initiative that helps students reach their reading goals in a fun way. Good reading skills are imperative, and as the data show, and my former colleagues and partners in progress, the esteemed superintendents and the Generation Next leadership work to alter, youth have to have proficient reading by third grade. Studies have shown that by the third grade, students learn to read, and then after third grade, they read to learn. So the NCAA has made a commitment to bringing exciting basketball events to fans all around the Twin Cities for the final four games, but we're also very committed to leaving a lasting and positive impact on students with this literacy program. So we look forward to working with the local organizing committees, you as educators and your leaders, and especially you, the students, uh, to read to the Final Four in your local area schools around the state. We want young minds to have so much fun with this program and reach all of your reading goals for the upcoming year. So my very best to you and happy read to the Final Four. Thank you, Catrice. Now listen. Our state's young people are so important that the mayors, the mayors of the two biggest cities in the state of Minnesota are both here this morning. And first we're going to hear from the mayor of St. Paul, and here he is. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. You told me before, but remind me, what school is this again? Fairway. What school is awesome? Awesome. We're, we're so excited to be here with you guys. You know why? I, I'm excited for so many reasons. And I'm excited because I love this school. I'm excited because I'm really, really a big fan of the children in this city. And the opportunity to hang out with you today is a really big opportunity for me. I get to spend some time with some spreadsheets later today. So this is a lot more fun. <laughs> I'm also excited because I'm a sports fan. Does anybody like sports? Yeah. yeah? Who likes to watch sports? Who likes to play sports? I heard somebody say soccer. What other sports do you like to play? Basketball. Basketball, yeah. Football. Anybody like to run track? So I ran track. I was an NCAA athlete and running track. And you know what? I learned even when I was your age. I was running track and I was running. And you know, when it comes time for the Final Four or the NCAA championships, there are a whole lot of people all over the country and all over the world who look and say, I wish I could be there. And what excites me about this is, you know what? I don't play basketball good enough to play in the Final Four. But guess what? You think I do? Well, maybe I'll try. Thank you. Maybe I'll try. But you know what excites me? I love to read. And through Read to the Final Four, we all get a chance to be a part of the Final Four. And that excites me. 
We all get a chance to be champion. Re Are there any champion readers in here right now? Yeah? Awesome. Well, we're going to get more and more of those hands up because we get a chance to be champion. You know what I love about books? In a book, you can go to the final four. In a book, you can go to the bottom of the ocean or you can go to Mars if you want to. In a book, you can travel the world. You can go back in time. You can go forward in time. In a book, through reading, you can do anything you want to. You can fly. You can soar. You can learn. You can do everything. You get it now? Yeah. You get it? Good. I heard you say, oh. And that's what this is about. This is about hearing you say, oh, all summer long and all school year long. Because next year, when it comes time to cheer for the final four, there's going to be a lot of people trying to figure out who's going to score more baskets. You know, I'm, I'm going to be most excited to see who reads more books. I think we have a final four team here in this school. All right, so I look forward to seeing Phelan Lake in the final four for reading. Are you guys, are you guys going to be there? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to be here. I wasn't told we were supposed to write like Dr. Seuss poems, so I didn't write one. But I think our next mayor who's speaking probably did. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's good to see you here. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Carter of St. Paul. And now I would like to introduce you to the mayor of Minneapolis, Mayor Fry. Well, thank you, Kate. For goodness sake, you all are great, and you all go to what school? That's exactly right. So how many of you, how many of you love your mayor of St. Paul, Melvin Carter, over here? He's a pretty special guy, right? Well, thank you so much. This is, this is, I think, the nicest class that I have ever spoke to yet. And I've spoke to a lot of classes even over in Minneapolis these days, but you all, you are really exceptional. You all are really exceptional. And, you know, as Mayor Carter, as Melvin just said, you all can read anything you want to read, but you also can be anything you want to be. You know, how many of you want to be a teacher when you grow up? How many of you want to be a, a doctor when you grow up? No? How many of you want to be the next mayor of St. Paul? I have no doubt that you could do exactly that. And something else that's that's similar about your mayor and I we we were both NCAA track and field athletes I wanted to play a little bit of basketball when I was growing up I tried wasn't quite good enough but what I realized that I could do was run a whole lot putting one foot in front of the other day after day and week after week and when you try and when you train and when you prepare eventually you become successful. You know what else is very similar? What? Reading. It might be, it, it might, you know, you, you know, you start off with a smaller book and then the books that you start reading get bigger and bigger and bigger until as soon as you know it, you're reading like whole novels. You're reading four and five hundred page books. You're looking at spreadsheets like the mayor's doing later today. And that's, that's kind of what the NCAA is teaching us right now, right? It's the more you work, the more you learn, the more you can be. And so we have no doubt that you are going to accomplish absolutely everything that you want to do in life. And it all starts right here with this. So again, thank you so much to the final four. Together we're going to do some great things. Two mayors here this morning because of you. That is pretty cool. So I have some more people to introduce. Uh, we have our superintendents of the St. Paul schools, 
and the Minneapolis schools, both here today. And they are people who wake up every morning thinking about our kids, and they go to bed every night thinking about our kids, and they have big jobs, and they are hard jobs. But the hard part of their job is not you. The kids are the best part of their job. So please welcome uh, Mayor, uh, Dr. Gothard and uh, Doc, uh, Ed Graff of Minneapolis. Thank you, Kate. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So my name is Ed Graff. I am the superintendent of Minneapolis Public Schools. We're just across the river there. You may know where we're located because you may spend yeah, time over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for letting us be here this morning. And good morning, everyone. Morning. Phelan Lake, I'm Joe Gothard, and I'm your superintendent. And it's great to be here with you today. So, <laughs> thank you. So we, our job is to support your teachers, your principal, but most importantly, we work for all of you. And we want you to know that between our two districts, there's 80,000 students, nearly 80,000 students in we want to make sure that you can read to the best of your abilities and that's why we're excited that the final four is here partnering with our school districts in our state to make sure that reading is a priority dr gothard do you have a recollection of what your favorite book was when you were a kid so i'll go a little bit beyond dr seuss i remember the first big book that i read and it was a book about lou el cinder lou el cinder became kareem abdul jabbar a hall of fame basketball player so i learned where he grew up how he grew up what he believed in but here's what I always loved about that book. I learned about how it felt to be different because in middle school, he was seven feet tall. That's taller than me. And it wasn't as easy as you might think for someone who's a Hall of Famer. And I just remember uh, being able to interact or be able to learn about his life and how he handled some of the situations that he was in. And it was definitely a book I remember. That's a great book. I have a special recollection of a book that I read when I was a little kid. It's kind of an obscure book. It's not one that many people probably know. It's called The Laughing Dragon. Have any of you heard of it? You've heard of it? Well, if you haven't heard of it, I want to encourage you when you're in your library to do a little research and see if you can find that book on the internet and, and maybe you have that here in your library. But it's a book about a dragon that was different also. And the dragon couldn't control his laughter. And when he laughed, he breathed fire. And eventually, he had to figure out how to contain his laughter. But it's a great story, and it takes place in Japan. So I want to encourage you to take a look at that book. And to think about it at that age that Superintendent Graff and I just talked about, I don't think we realized how important reading would be uh, in the work that we do. We are trying to impact your lives through reading from our love of reading. And that's what this opportunity is all about as we prepare to take on the Final Four Challenge for reading. You know, if we didn't read, we wouldn't be able to do our homework. We not, might not be able to text. We might not be able to play some games. Who has a favorite magazine that they read? We might not be able to read that favorite magazine. And you might not be able to do your homework. Now, now what about, <laughs> now here's, here's an important one, okay? And it is Teacher Appreciation Week. What about your math word problems? Think. You know, you have to be able to read to do and understand and get the right answer on your math word problems. You know, one other thing I know that you're learning about is um, in your classroom is about reading. And there's a group of students here from Miss Rankin's class. Raise your hand if you're from Miss Rankin's class. So I asked her this morning, what book are you guys reading? And she gave me a chance to share that book with everyone. It's this book right here. Yeah. This book is not just for kids. This book is for adults as well. Adults, if you've not had the opportunity to read this book, it is great. And that's one of the wonderful things about stories about reading is that you get to go different places. You get to experience different things. But most importantly, you get to learn. And I don't think it's too strong for us to say this morning that reading absolutely opens up the world. It opens up the world to your opportunities. So both of us, on behalf of Minneapolis Public Schools and St. Paul Public Schools, uh, we can't stress enough how important it is that not only you're reading by third grade, but you're reading by third grade to open up your world to a future of success. Thank you all so much for being here, and it's great to be with you, Phelan Lake, today. Thank you, students. Thank you, superintendents. I am having the best day. 
I am in the midst of so many VIPs. Does anybody know what a VIP is? What is it? What's a VIP? A very important person. Do you guys know who the VIPs are here today? Who? Who? Point to a VIP. Do you know? The VIPs here today are you guys. All of you. Because I'll tell you what, the Minneapolis Local Organizing Committee has a commitment to have youth at the center of our final four. And we're here to celebrate you and the power of reading. And we have another person for you to talk to, and then we have a special activity. The next person that is going to talk to you is a very special representative from the University of Minnesota. Welcome, Karen Kaler. Hi, students. Well, I'm really glad to be here with you today. Um, my husband is the president of the University of Minnesota. He wanted me to tell you that he hopes to see every one of you as a student at the University of Minnesota in about 10 years, okay? Got 10 years and then you'll enter in the fall. Now, here's the thing though, between now and then, you need to really read and learn a lot so that you will be ready. So that's why we're so excited about the Final Four Reading Initiative. So you'll have an extra boost and a, a challenge for reading this year. Now, Mayor Carter asked how many love sports. How many of you love to read? Okay, now, thank you, that's so wonderful. How many of you don't love to read? Mm. So not many of you held your hands up, but some didn't hold your hand up before because you're a little shy about it, right? You're, maybe you're a little embarrassed to admit you don't love to read. Now, my husband and I loved to read when we were kids, and we were so surprised when our younger son didn't love to read. And it turns out he had something called dyslexia. He was dyslexic, and that really means that it was really hard for him to read and spell. He really had to work hard at that. But he loved sports, and he was just good at sports, wanted to know more about sports, so he started reading about sports. And the more he read about sports, he found out that just like sports, the more you read, the better you get at it, right? So that's what I want for you. I want for you to pick, find something you love and read about what you love. You could read about sports. I saw butterflies in the hall. You might want to read about butterflies. I saw, there were pictures of butterflies. I didn't see them flying through. But pictures of butterflies. I saw, some of you were fabulous artists. I saw the pictures in the hallway. You might want to read about art. Whatever it is you love, I want you to read about that. And then you'll get better at reading. Now, um, the funny thing I learned, how many of you are writers? Do you write? A lot of writers. Well, I just discovered this year, so I've always read to learn about things. I discovered this year that I could write things and be a writer, and then I could share information with people in the future. So I wrote a book, a children's book, called Rusty Goes Swimming. It's about a dog who lived in the university house where I lived back in the 1940s and 50s. And now in the future, people can know about the adventures of this dog because I wrote the book. So I brought two copies of the book that I'm going to give to Miss Olson, your librarian, so that they'll be here in your school library. So maybe if you love dogs, you'll want to read about Rusty. But whatever it is you love, I want you to read about it. And thank you for being such very good listeners. And now, Mrs. Mrs. Morrison. So now we have now we have a special activity. We have a special opportunity to have a little bit of story time, and I am going to invite uh, the mayor of St. Paul to come and read his story first. And I'm going to ask where that should take place. Right here. That's probably a good guess. Sports. Let's see, it's about sports. All right, here we go, ready? Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> the ball bounces as my big brother Nate and I walk to the park. At the court, 
Everybody shakes hands, and the guys split into two teams of four. Shirts and skins. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, so I have to team? Okay, got it. Okay. I wish I was big enough to play, but because I'm only 10, I go to the side court. No other kids are here, so I practice my game. I dribble, I aim for the hoop, I shoot, I get the ball, and I shoot, and I dribble, and I aim for the hoop over and over and over again. Back on the main court, Zoe glides down the lane, fakes a pass, then flips a finger roll with his left hand. So smooth, it looks like slow motion. Now, I imagine playing as an all-star in the NCAA Final Four. Tie game, nine seconds left. I bounce the ball with my left hand. No one's open. Six, five, four. I drive left, spin right, and soar to the hoop. And the buzzer sounds. Oh, no, Luke yells. He lies under the basket, grabbing his ankle. I'm done. You need another player. What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. This is one of my favorite things about reading, is guessing what might happen next. So let's find out. I'm excited. I can't wait. How about James? Slinky points to me. You want to run? Yeah. I race to the court. Nate and the other guys gather around me. He's not big enough, says Marcus. Someone else will show. We're not waiting. Zoe picks up the ball. Come on, James. You're a skin. I peel off my shirt and think how skinny my body looks. You guard him, Marcus, says Nate. Stick to him. I look up at Marcus, who's a head taller. You see how much taller he is? Yeah. Yay. Height is important in basketball, isn't it? I told our superintendents, me and Mayor Fry, we're not going to play them in basketball. <laughs> we'll run a relay race against them. <laughs> I look up at Marcus, who's a head taller. His muscles push out his shirt. Maybe I'm not ready to be here. Three, three, game's 15. Right away, the ball goes to Marcus. I slip and fall to the asphalt as he goes to the hoop. Out of nowhere, Slinky leaps to block the shot. Get that out of here. Slide to your feet, Nate tells me. Slinky nods and flips a pass. I feel the worn leather, bounce it twice, and pass it to Zoe. Count it, he says, as the ball leaves his hands. Someday, I want to be able to shoot like that. Play back on Marcus, Nate says. Make him shoot outside. I move back, bending my knees and shuffling my feet. Marcus bounces the ball and looks right at me. You can't guard me. His shot rattles off the rim. Zoe rebounds, and we race the other way. I cut through the lane and bump into Marcus. It's like running into a rock. You're too small. Get out of here or I'll push you out. I don't like his talking. Why can't he just be quiet and play? At midcourt, Zoe swats a loose ball, and I have a wide open layup. Shoot it softly, I remind myself. Miss, Marcus yells from behind, and the ball bangs off the rim. I feel everyone's eyes on me and want to crawl off the court. Go strong to the hoop, says Nate. We gotta have those, says Zoe. I know, I shouldn't be out here if I miss a shot like that. Up and down we go. I bang against legs and hips to stay with Marcus. An elbow hits my head, but I keep my feet. I'm breathing so hard, my lungs feel on fire, and my mouth is so dry, I can't even spit. I drive for a ball that's going out of bounds and make the save. You okay, Nate? Nate asks. I feel the burn on my knee and see blood, but I know what to say. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> we sprint down court. Marcus makes a move and I grab him. What are you doing, he yells. You ripped my shirt. Call the foul then. I'm sorry about the shirt, but I'm sick of his talking. <laughs> foul, and keep your hands off of me. I see the guys watching, and I'm surprised to hear my voice. Then keep your hands off me at the, end, at the other end. What? I don't need to hold you, Marcus says. Okay, you too, Slinky says. Let's play ball. A crowd is gathered around the court, and someone's turned on music. Finish it off, Marcus, the tall kid shouts. We've got winners. 
Marcus leans forward and makes a move. I slide my feet and the ball hits his leg and skips out of bounds. He glares at me, but doesn't say a thing. I zoom down court, ferocious like a lion. I bounce past to Slinky, who scores off the board. Nice look, he hits my hand. The kid can hoop, a man in a dark glasses says, as I hurry back on defense. Okay, kid, Marcus sneers, you and me. He pushes off me and hits a jumper. My legs feel heavy now as the sun bakes the asphalt. I'm gonna make sure the adults get to see the pictures too. 14-14. <laughs> Game point. Zoe bounces the ball like a yo-yo between his legs. This is it. The team that wins keeps playing, and I feel my heart beating. I wipe my hands on my shorts, but right away, they're sweaty again. Zoe zips a pass to Nate. I bump my shoulder against Marcus. Nate passes back to Zoe, and Marcus rushes to double team. Zoe passes it to me. Shoot it! I turn and shoot in one smooth motion. What do you think? Is it going to go in? Yeah. It is. Yes, yells Nate, game point by James. He and Slinky lift me up and I grin a championship smile. That was our plan, says Zoe. Go to James for the game. You guys couldn't stop him. Good game, James, Marcus slaps my hand. Good game, Marcus. I'm happy as the last day of school. At the hoop, four new players are warming up. You need one, someone shouts? No, says Nate, we've got four. I can't believe I'm on the main court with these guys. I feel strong enough to run and play basketball all afternoon. Zero, zero, going to 15, I call. Ball's in. The end. figure out a way That's to, to count us one book toward That's our right. read of the final One book down, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds to go. That's right. Thank you, Mayor Carter. Thank you. And we have one more book. This one is quick and fun, and it is going to be read by our Minneapolis Mayor, Mayor Friday. We got a quick book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's it like to be a fish? Amazing. Can you imagine? Ah. <laughs> Fish live in water. They live in lakes. They live in ponds. Okay. You have the common shiners, the lake whitefish, the small mouth buffalo fish, aquariums, and even plastic bags. Your pet goldfish can live in a bowl. You can watch the golden fish slip over and under the castle, hide among the water plants, and glide quietly in their underwater world. A fish's body is just right for living underwater, just as your body is right for living on the land. You can swim, but a fish fish can swim better. A fish's sleek body is the perfect shape for swimming. Fins stick out from their fish's body. They, they help the fish to swim. A goldfish's tail fin pushes it through the water. Six other fins steady, steer it, or stop it. Most fish have skin that is covered with scales. Scales help fish to swim too. The scales are hard and they're clear and they overlap like shingles on a roof. The smooth, slick scales let fish slide easily through the water. A clear slime covers the scales. It helps fish glide through the water too. Scales and slime. You know what slime is? Yeah! Scales and slime. Many germs in the water get stuck in the fish's slime coating and are washed away before they can make the fish sick. Both scales and slime keep water from seeping into the fish's skin. Wait, slime is useful. <laughs> when the fish swim, they swing their tail fins back and forth, wave their other fins. They look as though they're flying through the water. If you watch your goldfish, you'll see that they open and close their mouths all day, all night. Let's 20 try that. How does that look? 
all day, all night. They look as if they're drinking water, but they're not. What are they doing? They're breathing. They're breathing. You breathe all day, all night too, but you can't breathe underwater, can you? Can't do it like fish do. Fish breathe with their gills. You breathe with your lungs. That's right. Your body takes in the oxygen that you need, and then you breathe out the parts that you don't. Fish. Fish need oxygen too. There's oxygen in the water, just as there's oxygen in the air. A goldfish opens its mouth and lets some water in. When the fish closes its mouth, the water flows over the gills and inside the body. The fish's body takes that oxygen it needs from the water, and then after passing it over the gills, the water leaves the fish's body through open or through gill openings. Pretty impressive. Fish need food just like you do, but they eat underwater. Have you ever eaten underwater before? Yeah. I, I have like once or twice. Yeah. At feeding time, watch your goldfish flip their tails. They race to the top of the bowl, snap a tiny pinch of fish flakes each day. Good fish flakes are a mixture of ground up flies. They eat ground up flies. Fish, shrimp, crab, oats, corn, carrots, and vitamins to make them healthy. Fish in the wild do not have someone to feed them every day. Many fish eat tiny plants and animals, so small that you need a microscope to see them. Bigger fish feed on worms, crabs, shrimp, and other fish. Usually big fish eat medium-sized fish, and medium-sized fish eat small fish. This is part of what we call the food chain, or the circle of life. <coughs> You are warm-blooded. When you are healthy, your body temperature is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Your body stays this temperature by itself, whether the, whether the air around you is hot or it's cold. Sometimes goldfish swish their tails and zip around the bowl. Other times they look as if they're, they've stopped moving, but they haven't. Their fins are always moving, even when they're at rest. Fish don't sleep like you and I do. They rest by moving very, very slowly. Why not? Let's all move very slowly. Fish's eyes are always open. They have no eyelids, so they stay open, even when they're resting and asleep. With a sleep body, fin, scale, slime, and gills, a fish lives as naturally underwater as you do on the land. They slip over and under their castle, hide among water plants, and glide quietly around in their underwater world. Have any of you ever set up a goldfish bowl before? So here's all you have to do. We're going to go through this real quick. You, you start with a clean gallon of water. So you get some water from the water fountain or from the sink, and then you wash some gravel by running water over it and spread it over the bottom of the bowl. So you take some gravel, put it at the bottom of the bowl. Then you pour a few inches of cold water into the bowl, and then you place some plants and maybe a castle or something for the fish to play around within the bowl. Then you gently pour the water in, and then it's, it's good for your fish to live there. So wasn't that a wonderful book? Thank you, Mayor Fry. In conclusion, if you have a third grade classroom anywhere in Minnesota or a third grade student in your life, please come to final4minneapolis.com and join us as we read to the final four. We have a present for each of you back in your classroom. It is a book for you from us. And the, for the rest of us, we'll be here for a few minutes if there are any media questions. Thank you.